There is a long Harold wig hack that has plagued me for years. Does fabric softener make wigs less tangly? Does it make them softer? Does it make them less shiny? Does it do anything at all? I set out to find out, but I didn't want to just pour fabric softener on a wig and call it a day. I wanted to do this scientifically. So in the name of Nygaard-san, welcome to Bad Wig Science. But you know what you totally don't need fabric softener for? These fabulously soft sheets from the sponsor of today's video, Brooklinen. Brooklinen offers luxury sheets in a variety of textiles and colors. And we spend a third of our lives in our sheets, so having really nice ones is important. But my 17-year-old cat here spends 90% of her time in this bed, and she deserves sheets as soft and cute as she is. I live in the American Southeast, which you can tell because I sleep with a fan. So on hot summer Georgia nights, I don't go anywhere near polyester sheets. This set is Brooklinen's classic hardcore bundle in their limited edition color, Himalayan Salt. This set is 100% long staple cotton, and it comes with four pillowcases, a fitted sheet, a flat sheet, and a duvet cover. And they have a thread count of 270, which makes them incredibly soft and still incredibly breathable. And if you get the bundle, you can mix and match from 20 plus colors and patterns while saving 25%. Me and Joe and all the cats slept in these last night and they are absolutely soft and cozy. They're super breathable and the cats love them. Don't you. And if you wanna try out Brooklinen, you can shop online from your own home. And right now, right when you're watching this, Brooklinen is having their memorial sale. So you have until May 31st to save 20% on all Brooklinen items. So it's the perfect time to try them out or stock up on your favorites. Thanks again to Brooklinen for sponsoring this video. Let's talk about things that we don't really know if you should or should not put fabric softener on because they're not as soft as these Brooklinen sheets. This myth has been around since before I started cosplaying over 10 years ago. And the common claims are that if you put fabric softener on a wig, it will help keep it from tangling. It will help detangle it. It will make it softer and it will make it less shiny and it will make it smell like fabric softener. I think we can assume that that one is true. I have heard these claims repeated over and over and over again for years, but I've never actually personally put fabric softener on a wig because I never felt like I needed to. But today I'm finally going to answer the question, should you launder your wigs? And most of the time I see people recommend this for relatively cheap wigs. So I went on Amazon and found the cheapest wigs I could find. I have in this bag, three Map of Beauty wigs, which were each $10 on Amazon. And I am way too excited about this because when I first started cosplaying, I bought several Map of Beauty wigs because they were so cheap. I have not owned one in years. I don't know if I still own any of the ones I had, but from what I remember, they were not great quality, so... I'm excited to see where they are almost 10 years later. I have not opened this yet, obviously. I did take the label off, so y'all can't see where I live. All right. Okay, even just from in the bag, uh, they're not super shiny. This isn't a map of beauty review, but I wanted to try and get basically the cheapest wigs possible because I feel like that is what people try to use this technique for is for cheaper wigs. So we've got cheap wigs. So I got three because we're gonna have one control because we're being scientists today. We have one control that I'm not gonna do anything to. We have one that I'm gonna put the fabric softener on and one for a different fabric softener test that we'll do later. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna treat these two wigs and leave this one alone. Then I'm gonna put them through the same stress tangling test. And then I'm gonna time how long it takes me to comb them out. But first let's get a look at how these wigs look. Okay, I... I like this color. I like this this color blonde. Like this is pretty. It's rel this is ten dollars. I mean it's it's more shiny than an Arda, but it's not a party city wig. So I guess this is why I would buy these back then. Because this isn't that bad. But we'll see how we'll see how she tangles. And so because it's been so long since I ever heard like the actual technique of putting fabric softener on a wig, I'm pretty sure you like mix it with water, but I don't know how much water. I don't know if you spray it on or dunk it. So we're gonna go over to the computer and I'm gonna try to find some tutorials on how to do this. So I just typed in 
fabric softener wig cosplay. And there's a couple things up here. And one of the things that surprises me here is there's actually an Arda wig tutorial. <laughs> um, so I wanna see what Arda says to do. This might be a bad sign, but the comments are turned off. Was that the fabric softener? What is this? Fill with lukewarm water. That's wig, wig shampoo, dry. Add fabric softener to the bath. That's gain something. It doesn't tell me what kind of fabric softener or how much. This just says mix it with water. Submerge the wig and allow to soak. After 30 to 60 minutes drain. Too much excess can create an oily texture. Okay, so you're supposed to mix an undescribed amount into water, let the wig soak in it for an hour, and then make sure you wash all of it out or it'll be gross. Okay, let's see what... This one is six years old and it's from... I'm going to say this. Iwasaka Miyuki. Oh my god, an Amino ad! Oh my god, it's been so long! Do y'all remember Amino? Oh my god, I had one! Wait! Oh, I remember Amino. Anyway, okay, just show me what you're doing. Okay. Okay, so this person is saying this also detangles the wig. Like, if you have a wig that's tangly, you can do this and it will help detangle the wig, but also prevent it. This one is soft land. How much water? Okay, they just say enough to cover your wig. Okay, enough to cover the wig and a cap. Yeah, uh, six hours or overnight. Okay, we're all ready. So, Arda says an hour. Iwasaka Miyuki says overnight. Let's see what, what else do we got? D Shine. Okay, this is where, this is from Laney in Wonderland. Okay, no intros, please. 24 hours, what is the, why? Why is this everything so inconsistent? Okay, so this is about D Shining the wig. Okay, I don't feel like I feel any more confident in what the fabric softener is going to do to the wig. I feel a little more confident in knowing how much fabric softener I'm supposed to use, but for how long you soak the wig, that was all over the place. So I do think I'm going to go with Arda Wig's recommendation of the 30 minutes to an hour instead of the 24 hours. And I'm also going to rinse out of it, just like Arda Wig said, because we wanna give this the best chance it is. Just because I don't think this is gonna do anything doesn't mean it won't do anything. So I'm gonna finally get some fabric softener and we're gonna do this. So we might already be off to a bad start because I went to the Dollar Tree to get fabric softener and this is all they had, some non-name brand fabric softener with what looks like a much smaller cap than what anybody had in any video I was watching. But to try and help this be like more scientific, I got out the food scale and the bucket is back. And I'm gonna measure how much water I put into the bucket and how much fabric softener goes into the bucket. We're doing this in milliliters because the imperial system when it comes to measuring weight. Okay, a cap full from this bottle is 57 milliliters. If I keep doing this, 60. Okay, 60 milliliters. I'm gonna tear, tar, tear. Fill this with water and see how much water we get. Okay, this straight up might overload the food scale, but 4,420, oh my God. Let's go. I'm gonna mix it up now, but I'm gonna put on gloves because I don't want this on my hands. That just doesn't seem like a thing I should get on my hands. I should have gotten a towel. I'm gonna go get a towel. Towel acquired, okay. I guess let's dunk her in the air. I'm gonna let her soak for an hour, but here are some of my thoughts. So this says to use half a cap for medium loads of laundry. I will try to look up how much water is in a load of laundry, but I think we can both imagine that it is more water than 4,420 milliliters. So already we're using way more fabric softener in ratio of water than what you would use for actual laundry. But the big three things we're gonna be looking at are, is the wig less shiny? Is it gonna tangle less than the control wig? And is it softer? All right, it's been an hour, so I'm gonna dump her out, wrap her up in a towel, and then hang her to dry overnight. And then we can get to tangling these wigs scientifically. 
Okay, so this one's finally dry. Um, my initial thoughts are it is not like gross feeling like I thought it would be. I would not say right off the bat that it is softer than the other wig. The first thing I want to test is the validity of the claim that putting fabric softener on the wig helps prevent it from tangling. So I'm gonna try to, as scientifically as possible, tangle both the fabric softener wig and the control wig the same amount. And for some reason I decided that that test was going to be running up and down the stairs in the wig. Yeah, I didn't last very long doing that. Uh, so then I decided to just kind of stand there and swish the wig, and I tried to do this for 10 minutes and then I quickly got bored. So that part of the test is only gonna be two and a half minutes because I just thought there has to be a better way. Okay, don't try this at home. I put the dryer on the no heat setting and don't worry, even though this was chaotic, I did do the same thing to both wigs. Both wigs got ran up and down the stairs 10 times. One, two, three, four, <coughs> five, six, six, <coughs> seven, eight, nope. nine, 10. They got swished for two and a half minutes and then they got thrown in the dryer for two minutes by themselves and one minute with a towel because throwing them in there by themselves hardly tangled them at all. So now I have two tangled wigs. This one is the control and this one is the fabric softener. And just by looking at them, um, the fabric softener already looks tanglier than this one. I feel like it's, it's very tangly up through here, but this one looks more tangly down at the ends. I don't know, maybe throwing them in the dryer isn't super scientific, but now I'm gonna do the next test, which is to brush them out and see how long that takes. But I'm also gonna keep track of how much hair ends up in my brush. So after each wig, I'm gonna take the hair out and I'm gonna weigh it. I'm gonna start with the control and then we'll do the fabric softener. I do have a couple wig detangling tips I will share with you though. So the first thing is put it on to something that's not going to tangle it. Usually the first thing people gravitate towards is a tripod, but a tripod has little knobbies, little screws in it, and the wig is going to get stuck on those and get attached and you're going to get really annoyed. So what I like to use is my dress form stand. Uh, they also make those things that clamp onto the table. I don't love those because I feel like I get more freedom of wig with this. The next thing is you need to secure it to the wig head. And you can do that with just sewing pins, which is fine, but they're not very strong. You can also buy big purdle pins. Those are also fine, but what I'm gonna use is stronger. The third thing you can buy is little T pins. Those suck. They get tangled in the wig. Don't buy them. What I use is these. These are straight hairpins. Now these are relatively hard to find. I buy them at Sally's, but they're the best wig pins, both for keeping the wig on your head and keeping a wig on the wig head because they don't have any balls on the tips and they're straight, which means you can stick them through the delicate lace of a lace front and it won't rip your lace. I got this tip from, I don't even know if he makes videos anymore, but Bobby Pins, he makes like drag wigs. I don't know if he still makes YouTube videos, but I used to watch a lot of his wig YouTube videos and he recommended these and these are the best pins in the world. Um, I have friends that have worked at Disney that stole a bunch of similar pins from Disney. They're really great for keeping the wig on the head because there's two of them, so you can do that. The next thing is I am gonna use a brush. I feel like every time you see people talk about how to detangle wigs, it's like, use a wide tooth comb. Um, I've done that and I prefer this brush, but this isn't just, this is just it. Wait, this isn't just any brush, okay? This is a, the wet brush. If you have one of these, you know what I mean when I say I will not brush my hair with anything but this. This is also what I use on wigs. And then how do you actually detangle it? You, ju you just brush it, that's it. Obviously starting from the bottom is a good idea, but I don't always do that and it often is fine. I am going to brush these out to the point where you could like run your hands through them, but I think there's a big misconception that wigs have to be that way because they don't. As long as you don't have any like big, oh, I forgot to time this. Science, science is ruined, where's my phone? The science isn't actually ruined. I can just look at how long I brushed that for uh, in editing. 
So I won't know what the final number is until I edit this, but you'll you'll see it on the screen. Um, but we'll we'll go with what I start with here. Okay, start. As I was saying, the misconception is that wigs need to be brushed to the point that you would brush your own hair. But in reality, it is actually good to have a little bit of tangliness in the middle of the wig because that just means there's volume in the middle of the wig. Often what you get the tangliest part, especially when you're wearing the wig for a long time, is you get a lot of tangling on the bottom side of the wig where it's been touching your back. The thing is, is if the wig is tangled at your back, nobody can see it. So it doesn't really matter. And so the way I usually brush my wigs is actually just by doing this, just lightly on the outside. And to me, this is a perfectly presentable wig. There's still some tangly bits in there, so for the sake of science, I'm gonna keep brushing. Okay, I can run my hands through that. I would say that's done. So that took three minutes and 20 seconds, and I will give you the actual number here in editing, but I'm gonna assume this was like four minutes. So for me right now, I'm gonna assume this wig was four minutes. I'll put the actual time on the screen. I'm gonna take the hair out of the brush, and I'm gonna ball it up so we can weigh it, but that's, that's how much hair we got. So now let's do the fabric softener. Actually gonna time this this time. Okay, we're going, go. I really don't understand how this got so much more tangled. The control wig, I felt like I had a hard time tangling it. Running up and down the stairs, I felt like did nothing. Swooshing it, I felt like did nothing. And then when I put it in the dryer without the towel, it also seemed like it did nothing to the control wig. But this, when I opened the dryer to put the towel in, I was like, that already looks up. Okay, I think we're almost there. Four minutes and 42 seconds. Get the hair out of the brush. That's how much hair we have for this one. And I will weigh those. Oh, this one is the control. This is the fabric softener. Uh, I won't know for sure how long that one took because I did not actually take the time correctly, but <laughs> we'll have that on screen and I will present who won the detangling test? The next thing we're gonna do is as scientifically as possible, and I have kind of a fun method to do this with, is see which one is shinier. Okay, I'll explain this as I show it to you, but this is my scientific shininess test. So I'm gonna go back over here. So I have the wigs set up on the mat in the same place. And then if I go over here, I have my two lights that are the same lights set up equidistant from the wigs. And then I have my old camera set up to film the screen on my new camera. So I'm recording the backside of the camera so that I can see these indicators. These are called zebras. These are a feature that the camera uses to tell me, the user of the camera, that that part of the image is overexposed. So. If we look at the wigs in the actual shot, you can see you don't actually see that in the actual camera. But if we look at the actual screen, we can see the zebras. So this one here is the fabric softener and this one is the control. Now this is obviously not super scientific, but we are getting a little more zebras on this wig. But I'm gonna go over there and I'm gonna spin them around a little bit. I'm gonna hold up some other wigs. I'm gonna put my own hair in the shot so we can kind of compare. For the most part, especially just like by eye from without the zebras, they kind of look exactly the same. So to compare the shininess to another wig, I have an Arda wig in a similar color. That's what that looks like. And this is what my hair looks like compared to it. So I'll let you decide. They look pretty similar to me. Seem like they have about the same amount of zebras, so I would say that fabric softener does little to nothing to do anything to the shininess. So the next thing I want to know is does the fabric softener in the wig affect how well the wig can be styled? So I'm going to style both of these in the same way. And the first thing I'm going to do is curl both of them. My preferred method of curling is to use mesh rollers, which are these plain little rollers with a plastic coating that have a metal spring in the middle of them. They don't have any Velcro. They don't have anything to hold the hair onto the curler. They're just a little roll. I like them because they're not gonna snag onto the hair. They don't make any weird kinks in the hair the way a foam roller does with its little 
bar on it, and the open design with the metal spring helps heat the inside of the curl. And it's a really easy method, because all you gotta do is get a piece of the wig, hold the ends in a little piece of toilet paper, then you just roll it up like you would any other curl, and then I secure them to the wig with, again, my big old hairpins, just by sticking them into the wig head. You can also secure it with the big pearl pins, but you need two pearl pins per curler, whereas with these, you only need one pin per curler. Once all of that is curled, I curl it with a steamer. If you do not have a steamer and you are trying to style wigs, absolutely get one. It's the most even heat you can get on the wig because the heat is in the air, so it's traveling into more places than it would with a straightener or a curling iron. It's getting the entire curl hot instead of just the inside of it. The other thing that's great about a steamer is that no matter what you do, you cannot fry a wig with a steamer as long as that wig is made of at least Kinecolon. Kinecolon is a kind of hair fiber. That's what these wigs are made of. You can get plenty of cheap wigs that are made of Kinecolon. Kinecolon can handle temperatures up to 248 degrees Fahrenheit or 120 degrees Celsius. And guess what? Water turns into steam at 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. So no matter what you do with that steamer, you're not going to fry the wig because it just doesn't get hot enough. Arda fibers can go up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 212 degrees Celsius, so you can abuse those. But even if you just have a cheap Kinecolon wig, you're never gonna fry it if you're using a steamer. I like to go through one at a time and put some heat onto each curl and then put a bag over the wig. You wanna get a good amount of steam in the bag, stop using the steamer, then seal up the bottom of the bag, and then I'll throw a towel on top to try and keep the heat in, and then you just leave it there, literally for like a day. You wanna leave it there because you need it to cool down. Because wig fibers are plastic, so when they're heated up, they're malleable and they can change shape, but they will only stay in the shape that you keep them in until they cool down. And in this case, they might feel a little damp, so you also want them to be completely dry because the water's gonna weigh the wig down a little bit and you want it to be bone dry when you take those out. Okay, well, I only had enough curlers to curl one of the wigs and half of the other wig, so the control wig is only half curled, but I let them cool and dry overnight, so now we can see if the fabric softener affected this wig's ability to curl. I don't know why it would, but I wanted to see if it would. But yeah, now you get to see how nice the mesh rollers curl stuff. And see how easily they just come out? Boop. You get these perfect, almost perfect little ringlets. If you do smaller sections, you get better curls, obviously. Okay, so here's Miss Fabric Softener wig. I did really big sections, so obviously some of the curls are gonna be like not perfect little ringlets, but she's pretty bouncy. I don't see anything wrong with her. She definitely curled, so I guess, so at least we know the Fabric Softener does not affect the wig's ability to be styled in this particular way. Though, let's see if the control wig's curls turned out any better. I'm gonna assume that they're just gonna be the same. So here's the control wig, and other than the fact that this one isn't entirely curled, they both look exactly the same. My suspicion was that the fabric softener would affect the hair's ability to be heat styled just because it's an extra coating, but it looks like it did absolutely nothing. Now, will this affect the wig if you crimp it? Let's find out. Okay, fabric softener did in fact crimp. This one is the control, also crimped. So at least there's not like a negative effect. Right now it just seems like it does nothing but make it smell like fabric softener. However, I have one final test that's gonna involve the third wig. So, so far we've tested to see if the fabric softener has any effect on preventing tangling. We've tested to see if it makes it less shiny, and we've tested to see if it makes it softer. Though I guess I didn't do that, so. They both feel like plastic wigs. I do think this one maybe feels softer, so maybe it does do that. Like, just a hair 
Yeah, I guess it does make it a little softer. So I guess that's a thing it does. Anyway, the final thing I wanna test is the claim that if you have a very tangled wig, that you can soak it in fabric softener and it will help detangle it faster. The way I'm gonna test this is I'm gonna take my control wig that has, obviously I've done stuff too, but it has not been treated with fabric softener yet. And I'm gonna take this fresh wig. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take both of these and I am gonna tangle them beyond belief. This time I'm not trying to simulate your average day to con. This I'm trying to simulate you threw that wig in your car and you left it in your car for six months and it rattled around on the floor with your shoes. We're doing that level of wig damage. I'm gonna take one of the damaged wigs, I'm probably gonna do this one since I haven't done anything to it, and we're gonna soak it in way more fabric softener than I used the first time. I'm gonna leave it in there for 24 hours like one of the videos suggested, and then we're gonna take it out, we're gonna dry it, and we're gonna see which one detangles faster. I'm gonna get rid of the fabric softener wig because at this point, she's she's a nice wig now. So she's gonna get to live her life and not get damaged anymore. But these unfortunate souls. Oh, I feel so bad, this wig. This wig never had a chance. My tangling method this time, it might be a little less scientific, but it's definitely more theatrical. <laughs> All right, I better play Hall of Mountain King for that. That was, this one's the control wig. I'm not gonna do anything to that. This one, I'm gonna leave it as it is. I'm not gonna brush it. I'm gonna put it back in the bucket with way more fabric softener and leave it overnight. I also didn't rinse this one out. So it's gonna be totally fabric softenered for this next test. And once it had dried, I brushed the control and timed it. And then I brushed the fabric softener one and timed it. And to my surprise, the fabric softener one did take less time. And it's not a significant amount of time, but it is still a time difference. And we didn't see that in the first test. So maybe there is something to this. And I will say, when I was brushing out the fabric softener one, I did feel like there was less friction, which I think is supposed to be the point. It slicks up the fibers a little bit, so it takes less effort. And I did feel like it took less effort. So maybe that's why the comments were turned off on the Arda wig video was because maybe you are supposed to leave it for several hours to have it do anything. And I guess you aren't supposed to rinse it out. However, that said, it was only a two minute time difference. And I don't know about you, but these wigs are obviously not like in the condition they came out of the bag in, but they're still totally fine. And honestly, this one smells so strongly of fabric softener. I personally would not be able to stand wearing that at a con. I would be able to stand wearing this one at a con because it doesn't smell like anything. The first fabric softener one ended up hardly smelling like fabric softener at all. The wig itself didn't, but the wig cap really smelled like it. And if you are at all sensitive to smells, I don't think this is something you would ever wanna do to the wig because the one thing we have definitely proven, by far, without a doubt, is that if you put fabric softener in your wig, it's gonna make it smell like fabric softener. If you like that, that's cool. If you have a wig that got really dirty and smelly, this might be the solution for you. But if you just wanna detangle the wig, you can just brush it and it might take a little while. It might take a little patience but you can just brush it and you can get the wig pretty much back to its former glory. I will say for sure, I don't think that the fabric softener has any effect at all on the shininess of the wig. It being softer and less tangly, I can see that possibly happening uh, because I do think it made it a little bit easier to detangle, but only a little bit. And I don't think that little bit of less friction is worth putting the wig in a fabric softener bath and having the wig smell so strongly of fabric softener that you can't even stand to wear the wig anymore. I am only one person and I was obviously super biased with this. I went in thinking the fabric softener was gonna do nothing. And to my surprise, it does seem to do a little bit. But because of that bias, I wanted to get a second opinion. So I called up a wig stylist. 
Hello, I'm Victoria Bain. I have been working on wigs and cosplaying for about 21 years at this point. I love doing all sorts of types of wigs, but my specialty is the Usagi style wigs or Sailor Moon style wigs with the, you know, the twin tails and the buns. That's what most people would know me for, I think. 21 years, oh my god. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was I was I was there back back in the day when all we had to do to buy wigs was go on um amphigori.com. Been doing this a real long time. <laughs> yes, here's the question. Do you or have you ever put fabric softener in a wig? I have not, but I have been in the presence of someone who's done it and I have seen the results and they can be mixed. I think what it depends on is the fibers in the wig. And sometimes I think the thing that is key is that it's a cheaper wig, but I think the less expensive fibers take to the fabric softener better in terms of like, you know, taking out the shine and, and you know, softening it up and everything. I've seen it work. And I've seen it not work, so <laughs> it's kind of a mixed bag. The big thing I see people recommend it for is detangling the wig. Oh. So do you need, do you know anything about does it help detangle the wig? That I don't know. I've I've never actually applied it for that use, but I can see maybe why people would use it for that. Like it, it might have a property to like maybe coat the fibers and make them a little bit softer, a little bit more slippery. Like I. I, the only the only way that I could see that it would work, like I said, it would be to like coat it or make it slippery. But out outside of that, I can't see how it would. Yeah, because I, if it's not like actually like you know doing something to the fiber, it's just gonna slip right off. The big reason I wanted to talk to you is because you do usagi wigs, and usagi yes. wigs are so hard to maintain. <laughs> Yes. What advice do you have for people to maintain their wigs not being tangly? So, number one, actually, yeah, this stuff right here, it's just detangling spray. And I mean, there's a bunch of different brands, but this one is just the Oan Natural Weave and Wigged Conditioner and Detangler. I mean, it doesn't have to be this one. There's a whole bunch of different wig detanglers on like Amazon. If you go to just like a, a beauty supply shop and if you can't find it yourself, just ask them for a wig detangler. It's just a spray on product. You don't have to do too much, but yeah, it's, it's one of the things that I never, I have like little mini bottles too that I don't don't ever go to a con without if I have a long wig or if I have like, you know, so, no, somebody's going to be in the room who's got a long wig, that, that, a pack of that is always with me. <laughs> I usually will tell people like after you've like, you know, worn it for a little bit, spray it down, start at the ends with like a wide tooth comb or a detangling comb and just work your way up in small sections. But also while you're wearing the wig, you can bring a wide tooth comb with you and just kind of like, you know, manage it throughout the day. But the number one thing that you can do to keep the tails intact is to add pigtail shields to them. And I actually did a little video about it uh, a little while ago. The, it's all it is, is just a, a long tube of tool that is close to the color of your wig fibers. The way that I do the pigtails is that they're like, I take the art of clips, I take the clip out and then fold them over and then sew them up together at the top. And then you just slide the tube of tool down and stitch it across the top and then you can and tie them to the stubs on top and then you put your Odango over it and you'll never have to worry about that. You can find me on Instagram at Vicky Bain, also on TikTok at Vicky Bain. I have a YouTube channel. There's not a lot there yet, so you don't really have to go there, but I'll let everybody know once more videos are up. My commissions right now are closed, but it's looking like we're going to reopen that probably in around mid-August. So keep your eyes open for that. I'll make announcements on my Instagram just to let everybody know when the dates are and when things do officially open. So there you have it. Fabric softener is, as Vicky put it, a mixed bag. It's not a magical solution to detangling or de-shining wigs. It's a smelly, messy process that results in very little to no effect on the wig. The thing I want to be really clear about, though, is that I'm not saying that if you're already doing this to wigs that you need to stop. I know the thumbnail is very extreme. What I actually want to stop is people recommending this like it is the only way to detangle a wig. The only way to detangle a wig at the end of the day, no matter what you put on it, 
is to brush it. But I want to hear from you. Do you do this to your wigs? Do you find it helpful? Am I being a big grumpy butt? Or were you also super skeptical of this fabric softener myth from the start? I want to know, so please let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can check out my Patreon where you'll get exclusive content. But if you're just watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, or sharing this video with your friend or your mom, or subscribing, did I say subscribing? I might have. If you're doing any of the YouTube things, you're helping out the channel a whole lot, and I appreciate you so much. And thanks again to Brooklyn Inn for sponsoring this video. Remember, you can get 20% off all Brooklyn Inn products until May 31st for their memorial sale, so you should go check them out. I think I might have just been a grumpy butt this whole time. I think that might be the consensus of the video, is Sarah is a grumpy butt, no one can have any fun, and just brush your wigs, okay? Bye. <laughs> Thank you to the patrons, Lunar Lepus Cosplay, Sherry, Adil, No Roman LOL, Amai Jelly, Veli Slava, Hannah, Fake Smiley 7, Sebastian, Amar, Simrel, Matcha Kit Kat, Deli Rai, Mina, Stephanie, Mo, Bailey, Almi Fox, Aurora Polaris Cosplay, Aaron, Tomaki Potato, Gabby Bear, Neil, Jessica, Renee, Sarah, Kiwi Kikos, Lapis, Rhonda, Another Zip Tie, Hazel, Alec, Lady Senshi, Rambulan Cosplay, MT Gret, Free Wings Cosplay, Jenna, Ashton, Constance, Frosty Blades, Rory, Kimberly, Tam Tam the Taylor, Ray Sparks, Legfish, Swingularity, Amanda, Paul, Joby, GT Cosplay, Zhibi, Cal, Sansuffle, Flair, Claudia, Katie, Snot Muncher, Allison, Queen Platypus, Riruro 16, Taylor Tessipo, Haley, Alyssa, Max, Akima Aki, Chibi Elise, Rainbow Lola, Gloom Shroom, Infinite Salad, Miba, Kel, Hubasta, Mads, Ollie Boondingles, The King Theory, Magda, Paint It So, Sky, Ash, Sleepy Ellie, Audrey, Allison, Spacey Stitches, Foxy McLoxy, Sunny, Coco Yumi, Skasa, Ariana, Articus Minor, Raina, Food Penguin, Emmy, Alyssa, Stephanie, Katie, Experimental Blue, Toby, Shellman, Alice, Lena, Sostra, Haley, Evandaria, Samantha, Faybound, Adriana, Amber, Kim, Fennec, Emma, Kaimatsu, Block, Kitty, DJ, Meredith, Taylor, Sarah, Kira, Draws, Cal, Bones, Bianca, Lunar, Gaia, Lularush, Cosplay, Delos, Fluffy Hair, Marcy, So Into Music, Amelia, Julian, Cam, Zen, Pin, Snip, and Claire. I'm about to do the stupidest thing I've ever done for a video or a thumbnail. There's a drop cloth on the table. There's a towel wall. We've got two cameras recording. Oh God, let's not fuck this up. This poor wig. Does it do anything at all?